I sampled my 100-year-old piano to analog reel-to-reel -reel tape using my Tascam 388 8-track and built it into an Ableton Live instrument rack. Today, we're going to find out how's it sound. Hi, I'm Brian Funk, an Ableton certified trainer and host of the Music Production Podcast, and I'm here to bring you unique sounds for your unique sound. In this video, we'll hear how the 100-year-old tape piano sounds. We'll look at the Ableton Live instrument rack. I'll show you how it works, how it was built, and we'll learn how we can use the power of Ableton Live to take this piano into new territory unimaginable before. You'll be able to download this Ableton Live instrument rack and use it in your own music. So let's hear how it sounds. Wait, wait, I know what you're thinking. Why do this? I already have a beautifully recorded piano in one of the best studios in the world with the best gear. Why bother? Because I have that piano too, and so does everyone else. And you'll never sound different if you use the same sounds as everyone else. This piano has flaws and imperfections, just like you and me. It was made in 1913. It lived through the stock market crash, two world wars, the invention of television and the internet. There are some noisy mechanics, strings that have never been changed, but it has history and it has character and personality. And that's the kind of stuff we want to bring into our music. To add even more character to this piano, I sampled it to my Tascam 388 to capture that analog warmth and character of reel-to-reel -reel analog tape. Here's something fun to think about. When this machine came out in 1985, this would have been technology 70 years into the future compared to the piano. Today, they're both very vintage. This machine's almost 40 years old. The piano is well over 100 years old. Together, they make something very cool and vintage, but at the time, this would have been futuristic technology to that piano. So here's the instrument. And I'll show you how it works inside. So we've got a bunch of controls here. We can soften the attack. Sometimes the attack can be a little, some of these keys have a lot of mechanical noise, so we can kind of soften that up. And it won't be so harsh with the impact of the hammers, but you might like that, which I do, so I'm gonna leave that all the way down. We've got a filter, so if we wanna kind of dull the sound out a little bit. Now it sounds almost like a felt piano. We can bring that back up. The timbre control changes the way the samples are distributed across the keys. So you can hear we get different tones. In the extreme settings, it gets really weird. But you can get some interesting things happening. When you go a little more subtle. Starts to sound like a banjo. I'll bring that back to zero. Now we have control over the damper volumes as well. So the dampers are the things that land on the keys after you release the notes. Now to make this piano sound realistic, I wanted to capture that because that's a big part of the sound. So every time we play a note and we let go, we might hear some damper sounds. And we can control how loud those are by using this volume control and how likely we are to hear that noise with this control. So if I crank it all the way up, I'm going to hear it and it's going to be loud. So when I let go of the key, we get those sounds of the dampers landing on the strings. Now you can, of course, dial this in how you like. And if you bring it down really low, you'll only ever hear it occasionally. And if you bring it all the way down or set the volume to zero, you won't hear those sounds at all. So that would be a cleaner sound. But that's not really what we want, is it? So we've got also controls for the high end. So if we want to bring just a little more brightness to our sound or take away some brightness, we can do that here. The honky tonk gives us a kind of chorusing effect. Kind of makes it sound a little bit out of tune fun little effect there a tremolo i figured what the heck you know let's give this piano a tremolo give it a little movement 
We'll turn that down. Then we got a delay. You can control the time and how long it feeds back. Very long feedback. You make those fun sounds with the time. Turn that down. And then we've got a reverb. And you can make it very lush if you want. It turns into like a beautiful pad as time goes on. Bring that down and turn down the reverb. And then the final control determines how much volume will be affected by the velocity. So if I crank it up just so you hear it, get really quiet sounds. It's really loud. I like it somewhere around 30 or 40. So you get, so you get some variation, but it's not too crazy. Now, if I open this up, we're gonna look at the instrument here, the tape piano. I sampled every single key of the piano, all 88 keys, three times each. And they're set up in a way so that if I go to the key selector, the sample selector, each set of keys is on a different part of the selector. And I've got a modulation here on LFO3 that is constantly modulating the sample selector control. That means at any given time, when I play a note, I'm going to get one of those three possible samples. So I'll never get the same note every single time. Even when I play a MIDI clip back, it's going to randomly generate one of these three samples for every note. To demonstrate this, I think a great way to show you, so I'll pick this note right here. And I'm going to turn on repeat on my push. You should be able to hear that there's different samples being triggered. Let me turn off LFO3 so you can hear what it sounds like when it's just one sample. Starts to get mechanical and kind of phony sounding because, you know, real world instruments don't always sound the same. Now when I turn on LFO3, we're getting variation. We might get any one of those three samples triggered at any given time. And that makes the piano just sound a little more lifelike and alive, which is a really cool feature. So part of the beauty of setting up these macro controls is that you can customize the sound however you like. You can change things, filter things out, and make your own custom piano sounds. There's really no limit to what you can get. But I have set you up with some macro preset variations. And we've been listening to the clean sound. This is just the pure piano, no real effects or anything going on here but I've set one up called Hall. We'll just go through these. So this has a bit of reverb on it. Little softened attack. Let's check out some of the other ones. Nostalgia. This is gonna sound older. This has a little more lo-fi sound. Want to get real lo-fi? Let's check out lo-fi piano. You want to go super lo-fi, let's worn down. This I'd say is like lo-fi, but also like kind of warbly. Cool sound. Now we get a little more experimental. Memory mind. Memory mind, isn't that a fun word I made up? This has a lot of delay, a lot of movement in it. I think this one would be especially useful for little melodies up high. Big mystery. I 
that's a really cool sound. Playing around with the reverb and the filtering and the timbre is cranked up. Weird vibes, thought this sounded kind of like a vibraphone. And again, I just want to point out, um, these are like the types of sounds that'll give your tracks character. People will notice your song when it has an interesting sound. How many songs do you know that when you first hear them, you can identify them right away due to the sound? And it's probably not because it has that same grand piano that everyone else has. It's probably a sound that has a little bit of charm, something different about it. That's what I'm trying to bring you here. Now we get a little wilder, the old saloon. It's watching Westworld and uh, have that old piano that's always playing covers of songs. So this kind of is inspired by that. Interesting sound anyway. And then we have the harps a banjo, a combination of a harpsichord and a banjo. Cool. Um, lots of great sounds here. You can have a lot of fun. And if you come up with a sound you like of your own, say you're fooling around with the controls, we make one right now, a little honky tonk, a little extra reverb, a touch of delay, and even, what the heck, a little tremolo just for the fun of it. That's a cool sound. So we can just create a new snapshot right there. And that's what we've got. We can name it what we want. We'll call it Dull Piano. sound. I hope you can see how creating your own instruments and having different sounds will make your music more interesting and more unique. This piano has lived a hundred years plus. It's had many different owners, I'm sure. And now that it's going out to the world as well, it's really great that other people are going to get to take this piano and continue its story in their own music. And if you make music with it again, I would love to hear it. And I'll edit the SoundCloud playlist so other people can hear it too. Keep working on your music and your art. Remember, a little bit every day goes a long way. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Brian Funk. Have a great day.